episode of Business Brain, the GGP Lifestyle Business Mastermind Group. And I'm hoping you can hear, I'm trying to do it real quickly, that I'm slurring. I'm trying to tell the story real quickly. I've got to run out to dinner. So I'm going to try and make this quick. This is called a very rational fear of dentists. Now we all know the story of people, or the stories of people who have this irrational fear of dentists and the pain that going to dentist halls and um, pain of extractions and you know the drill and all those things and I understand it to totally I understand that perfectly but I've never had that I've been very very lucky I've never had a lot of pain at dentists I've never been scared of the pain the drill it used to be a bit annoying but never bothered me that like, sound or the sucking or the spit out your mouth you're like choking your own teeth bits or whatever but as I got older I'll tell you the very rational fear of dentists I've developed I'll tell you this story real quick so I went to the dentist right I, st- I live here in southern Spain and this is not a language barrier thing. This happened to me before. I think this is a new occurrence because when the NHS was running the dentist, it was a very different experience. But I, my, my, I had a gold tooth, a gold crown, it broke. So I said, I need my gold town, crown fixed. And they um, gave me an x-ray. They said, oh, yeah, the crown's broken. But also because the crown's broken, all the sugar's gone into the tooth. The tooth's right and the nerves are right. And you really should have the tooth out. Now, I don't like having my teeth out because I know my teeth are strong. They also told me that my wisdom tooth had a problem. And I should have that out too. So I said, I don't want the wisdom tooth out. Give me a price. I said, I know dental work is expensive out here. Give me a price to have this crown replaced and all the tooth removed. And I'll see if I can afford it. They came back to me with a price, 150 euros. This is what it's going to cost. Now, I know, truth be told, I should have been paying more attention. But I've been here for so long, I went back. Um, I wasn't even paying enough attention anyway. But I knew I wanted to have dealt with it because the crown was, you know, jagged and it was cutting the inside of my, my mouth and all this kind of problem. So anyway, accepting my own responsibility, although things are cool for me, but still accepting, you know, the people, the naysayers are going to tell me it's my fault. I just want to get to the point, the principle of the point. So I went back to the dentist, as you can see, as you can probably hear, I had the tooth extracted. They tried to take the tooth. I said, I told you, I don't want wisdom teeth taken out. My teeth are strong. It ain't causing me any pain or problems. Leave it right there. They extracted the tooth. Took them a long time. Took off the crown, extracted the tooth right. So as you can hear, I'm talking with a slur, still got this big bit of cotton in my mouth, etc, etc. Then as I'm leaving, the lady gives me very good service, tells me um, that, you know, this is, I need to take these antibiotics and this I should take care of my mouth while, you know, after extraction, etc, etc. Then she says, now, in a month's time from now, we're going to call you back. And to put an implant where your tooth is now missing, it's going to cost you 500 euros. And if you'd like another crown, the crown is going to cost you 400 euros. So I'm there, and it's really, very really polite um, receptionist. You know, all these companies who've had them, you know, just like I said when I was on my rant about bad service, they always employ very good customer service people, so it's hard for you to get mad at them while they're trying to rip you and take your pants. So I was polite, I smiled, I said, okay. I said, so I've got a month to win the lottery, and she looked at me, and I smiled. But I'm saying to myself, yeah, when I came in here, I told you my crown had broken. That was my problem, right? Now you, and this is why I have a very rational fear of dentists. They're like, like, like doctors, like um, car mechanics. You have a level of expertise that I don't have. I can't assess my own problem. So to an extent, I have to trust you. But here's the deal. And this happens in car mechanics all the time. I came into you with a problem. My crown had broken. You could have said, okay, no worries. We're going to fix your crown. There's a price for the crown. Front of yours. See you later. You know, I'm putting up, taking the crown, putting up the crown, and there you go, bye. You took the, you chose to take an x-ray looking for more work. Frankly, I I'm sure somebody will want to convince me that you were really looking out for my own interest, but I've had this with dentists in Spain before. I took my kids to the dentist, and they came back to me three grand worth of work that needed doing. Three grand worth of work that they asked for to be done in the middle of the recession, which wasn't done. I told them to do only the work that caused my children pain. And my children have had no problems with their teeth since. This is why I have a very rational fear of dentists. <laughs> so you took it upon yourself to give me an x-ray and come back and tell me that I needed two extractions. And I was abundantly clear that I needed to know what the full cost of that work was going to be before I started. And they were absolutely 
stealthy and very, 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 very focused in the fact that they did not tell me the full cost of that work. They kept that information from me so they could get me started in the work. In the same way, like, you know, builders come around to give them a job and they price it up and they'll come around and leave their tools and then pee off to another job because now you're parked up. They go off and do the thing that's more important or more, more pressing or whatever. They can always come back to you because now they know that they've got that work. You can't go and do, you can't go and get it done anywhere else. You have to wait for them. Little trick that so some, I'll call it unscrupulous, just some builders do it. It noise the, the shit out of me, frankly, but they did. I had one guy, I remember he come to park our floors. He came around, gave a surprise, put down some tools and disappeared for like three weeks. I called him up one day and said to him, your stuff's packed up in my living room. If you don't come and collect it by the end of this week, it's going to be on the street. You do not have a contract here anymore. Oh, mate, but, but, I said, oh, you know, but, but, but. You tell me you're going to come and do the work in seven days, 14 days pass, contacted you, you're doing work elsewhere, good, let them pay you. Let me go back to the market and find someone who can do the work I need done. I need my work done. So, you know, this is basically my very rational fear of dentists. They were very, very, very focused, and it was very clear to me by the embarrassment of the receptionist while she's explained to me the price of the work that I'd asked to be done, which I'd asked to be given this price at the outset, that this is the MO. We get you in, we give you a cheap price to get the work started, and then when you're halfway through the process, we hit you with the big price because at that stage, you're halfway invested and this, um, you might not even be able to, to back out. You know, And this is a, a very systematic way that people run business and I personally find it absolutely reprehensible. Um, there are lots of examples of people running business exactly like this, where the whole focus, yeah, you know, running this, um, doing this podcast is greatly difficult because business never stops, so you have to stop business, right? So, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people who do this exact same process in business, but the aim is to get you hooked. And once they got you hooked, they reel you in and it works the other way. What a lot of businesses do, particularly scam companies, is, you know, and I mean, this goes all the way up to the government. They'll take a certain amount of money from you, take more money than they deserve to take, knowing that most people will be too embarrassed to complain about it, wipe their mouth and walk away. You know, so it's only the complainers. I mean, we talked to someone, I was saying to someone yesterday, I said, you should be very proud of yourself. You know, people in business take the mickey out of you and you raise the complaint. And when they tried to fill you off, you raise it to another level and kept on raising it to another level until eventually you got your justice, you got what you deserved, you got the service that you paid for. And you have to do that because most people know that they can take your money, give you the runaround, and then you will just walk away. And it goes from every level. Like I've had problems with my bank. The mortgage is taking 10, what, 10 years almost. Let's say 2007, 2008 to 2018, 10 years to finally get them to the table now to start discussing exactly the concepts I was asking them 10 years ago when the recession started. But then, you know, most people would just wipe their mouth and take it. I said, no, I'm not taking it. This is bullshit. This is wrong. It's not what we agreed. Um, this is immoral. And even if, the, I told them in one email, even if the law doesn't support my opinion now, it will. And I knew it would. In exactly the same way like PPI, in exactly the same way like clouds are swelled, I said, even if the law does not support my opinion now, Maybe it's not aware of the situation. It will. And when it does, I'll be back with all this information to tell the law that this is what the bank did to me. This is what I proposed. They ignored me and they put me in all these problems. And now the bank's getting hit left, right and centre in Spain with the clouds of swell or the IRPH and or um, the, the, the closing costs they were charging people for completion and all the other illegal things the bank's doing left, right and centre. And now the chickens are coming on to roost. The banks are declaring all these practices illegal. I started to refund people money to the extent that one back, one judge actually gave the plaintiffs, the, the, plaintiffs um, the property. They said it was so badly treated by the bank, he basically wiped out the mortgage and said, keep the property, you don't have to pay the bank shit. But this is a business strategy, and I find it, for some reason, particularly prevalent in dentists, and I find it very, very, very reprehensible, because when I walk into a dentist, all I know is I've got to pay. I don't really know the state of my teeth. And I guess it's the whole idea of, you know, being a doctor and a Hippocratic over. If I can't trust you, you know, if, I, if you have knowledge that I don't have, and I am completely in your hands with regards to the quality and the quantity of care that I get and I need, if I can't trust you to tell me the truth, 
about what it is I need, if your motivation is going to be to try and get me to do treatments that I don't need, like that horrible doctor, that um, that story in the UK where the doctor got all these women to do these um, mastectomies that they didn't need. These are the most terrifying people that we're going to engage with in, in, in our lives because, you know, unless we're all going to become doctors and dentists and car mechanics and lift engineers, we have to start relying on these people. Now, I know the obvious answer to this is social media. And social media is great. And that is the best use for social media. Obviously, unfortunately, like everything with the internet, you know, it's, there is as much lies, false flags, um, you know, and companies paying people to say that they're good. Companies who set up, it looks supposedly looking independent websites, saying, you know, top 10 best trading companies. But all they're really trying to do is diss the other nine and promote their company. So we have to, you know, by the time you've gone through that, you're almost back to square one, that you can't really use social media unless it's personal recommendations and people you know or respect to get an idea and a handle on, you know, um, where you can get a good service. And let's be honest with you, all we want is a good service. I don't want to underpay these people. I must admit, I don't know what the true cost of dental work is. I just know that I asked them to tell me what it cost before I got started and they had an M.O., which was, no, 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 don't tell him. Let him get started, get that tooth out when he's a, a client of ours. Because for me, the average is one of the things that people, you know, human nature works on that. Oh, well, I've already been to them, already started them, I just stayed with them. And then B, what, you know, once we start the process, he's going to want to finish them with him with the big prices for the finishing the process. But if you'd have told me about this, to be honest with you, at the outset, I'd have just said to you, nah, the crown's cracked. Take off the crown, leave the tooth. I'll come back if it deteriorates. My choice. If it deteriorates and I cause more problems for my gum, my choice. But I don't really feel like paying you 900 quid right now. Not even that I can't do it, I didn't plan to do it, and I'm going to go to the marketplace and see if there's someone else who will do this work for less. But you take away my ability to go to the marketplace by hooking me in with lies and deceit. Now, like I said, this is prevalent, well, it's prevalent, it could be prevalent in any area where we as consumers know less than the people selling us and that actually is most things but you know it's most dangerous when we're dealing with doctors that's why american healthcare is terrifying and you know i say car mechanics because again i don't know how to fix a car not even the basics so that's why we always knew find a good mechanic when you find a good mechanic and i had the same thing a little while ago i had a problem a good mechanic around the corner and I had a problem and he didn't have to fix it. So he sent me to another mechanic who re he recommended. So I went there with his edification. This mechanic told me I needed a thousand years worth of work done. I thought, this don't sound right. He gave me two things I needed to do. So I went around the corner to the place that my wife had been to recently. That mechanic told me that I needed 200 years worth of stuff doing. They did the 200 years worth of stuff. And the other thing, the second thing on, the, on that mechanic's list, the first mechanic's list, he said, that's just dust. There's no action needed to be taken. That's just dust on the sensor. That will blow off end of story. Exactly as he told me. What was the difference? This guy was going to try and charge me four times more for the same work because I didn't know any better. This is how reprehensible it is. Um, so, as I said, I have a very rational fear of dentists. I ain't worried about the drill or the way they look over you like you've been abducted by aliens. <laughs> what about the anaesthetic stuff? I've had a friend who had a very bad experience with an anaesthetic um, uh, that, that was meant to be local but seemed to be general. And he was walking around drunk and he killed us in the car. <laughs> Love you, Mikey. Um, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, the drilling sounds or all the things that people really normally associate with a fear of the dentist. My rational fear of the dentist is that I don't fucking trust them. Back to swearing for emphasis, I don't fucking trust them. Most of the time I've been to a dentist, I truly believe that they have basically focused on how much money they can get out of me as opposed to giving me the treatment I require or have requested. And that's a horrible position to be in for a control freak like me. And I guess I'm going to have to spend the next couple of years looking for a dentist. I mean, luckily, the unfortunate thing is I don't have a lot of dental problems. Like I said, my teeth are good. My teeth don't want to take out my wisdom tooth. I'm like, there's no need. So I don't have the need to go to a dentist regularly. And again, that is the problem. But I think I'm going to pay, take the effort now to look for a dentist who I can trust. Because if I do have a problem with my teeth, I'm not going for this rigmarole again of somebody weeding me in, trying to 
you know, play boiler room with me, do a little deal with me, and once I'm hooked in, start to hit me with big costs and payments, hoping that I won't bolt. The thought of a dentist um, taking the um, MO, the business MO of a, of a scam artist to a boiler room is worrying because it's your health they're dealing with, but the problem is they're private. And that's why I said, I'm not going to get into NHS thing. It just means that public health care, which means it's regulated by a government body, has a real benefit because it's your health. And it's dangerous to put our health in the hands of the free market, where as a free marketeer, your only concern should be money. Therefore, your only concern to give me good health care is if it makes you more money. But if there are people giving bad health care, tricking people, conning people, lying to people, cajoling people, spending more money than they need to, and they're making more money than you, then aside, moral arguments aside, you should be trying to do that to up your margins. And that ain't a good thing. So, this is me. You might hear the dog in the background. This is my very rational fear of dentists. This is um, this has been Business Mastermind. Um, and this is really where this statement comes to itself, you know. Business is not about exploiting others. It's about getting rewarded financially, otherwise for adding value and benefiting other people's lives. And in doing so, improving the world. And as such, I wish that your business grows in abundance. Here's to our success. I love money. Money loves me. I love money. Money loves me. I love money. Money loves me. One, two, three. Do the math. I love money. Money loves me. I love money. Money loves me. I love money. Money loves me. One, two, three. Do the math.